Good morning. As I looked at your bulletin, I noticed that the services begin at 8.30 and not actually done till 11. And so Pastor Brian, Ryan really didn't say how long I could preach. So I seem to be having a little bit of uh, uh, some extra time here this morning. First of all, I, I do want to thank you for inviting me to, to come and, and to preach. It's been a whole month since I've been fully retired. And when they asked me to where I could sit, well, I was reminded that I could, uh, um, I could sit anywhere, but yet I, I, I thought about the fact that I haven't sat beside my wife for, for quite some time, so that's why I sat beside her. Um, and you've made it so easy for me because in most cases when, when a pastor's invited to preach that, that uh, he would do the whole service. But here, uh, Dave, you did such a great job and, and, and thank you for, for that. The purpose of my message this morning is, is, is to share with you that I have a friend who is going through an emotional time. He's at his end of his rope. And I've been trying to counsel with him about, uh, about all the changes that are happening in his life and, and how important it is in this changing society in a culture that is constantly changing, to have some things to hold on to. And so if you notice that in, my, in, in the, uh, the bulletin, the, the title of the message this morning is, Who's Holding Your Rope? And the rope that I'm talking about is not a physical rope, but the one that holds us and the one that we hold, that we cling to, and that is Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the music. We thank you for each other. We thank you for the introduction. We thank you for being together this morning on such a, a joyful time. And so, Lord, we pray that you continue to, to, uh, to use us to bind us together. Bind us together, Lord so that we are never separated, but the, that we are made whole in one. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart and soul be pleasing to you, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. I read a story about a, uh, a minister and a taxi driver that both died and went to heaven. And as St. Peter was showing the minister about his, 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 uh, uh, his place, his home, his room in heaven, he looked around and he thought, wow, this is pretty good. But then he noticed that the taxi driver, his home was like a mansion. And he thought, whoa. And so he asked God, he says, well, how come? How come that my place is just a small, small place and, and the taxi driver is like a, a big, humongous mansion? And God said, well, he said, you know, he says, when, when you preach, sometimes people have a tendency to go to sleep. But he says, when they get into a taxi driver, how many of you have been in a taxi driver? Okay. He says, they're wide awake and they're really paying attention. Well, I hope this morning that you are wide awake and really pay a lot of attention. I noticed, uh, I noticed some time ago that there was a, a group of kids that were roped together. You know, in a single line, they were walking down the street. And, and at first I thought, isn't that a cruel thing to do? To rope those kids together. But then I realized that it's not cool, but it, it, it's for them, it's, it's, it's for their safety. And the leaders are there to, to guide them to their destination and to protect them from getting lost. 
And the Bible tells us that if one strays from the group, then the leader rushes to bring him back to the fold. I've also seen mountain climbers. I wouldn't do it for all the money in the world. But I've seen mountain climbers rope themselves so that if one begins to fall, his partner will catch him. The reason why I'm here this morning is to ask you the question, are you attached to someone? Are you clinging to someone? In this changing culture, we need to have someone that we can cling to, someone that will, will hold our rope regardless of the situation. And I want to share with you three things, three principles, three guidelines that all of us need to be attached to. And I hope that you surround yourself with, with all three of them because three, all three of them are vital. Are you looking and watching and walking beside someone else so that they don't fall away from the faith? This is not just a pastor's job, but all of our jobs. Because the Bible reminds us in Ecclesiastes, the cord of three strands is not easily broken. And so I, I propose to you this morning that the first thing that we need to cling to, and he talked about it, Dave talked about it, how we need to cling to and be attached to a vine. And that vine is Jesus Christ. Amen? Sometimes in life there are many voices that are pulling at us. They're screaming for our attention. But unless we continue to hold on to that rope, our faith slowly slips away. Sometimes it seems like we become so busy and so preoccupied with the things of the world that we forget the, the most important thing in life, and that is to, to cling to Jesus, to remain, to abide in Jesus Christ. And, but then it seems like we hear him say to us, Return to me. As Dave said this morning, without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then our lives slowly slipped away and we lose that fire. We lose that power. We lose that connection. It's almost like a coal, a piece of coal that you take out of a fire. At first, it's burning, but slowly, slowly that fire goes away. And so I propose to you this morning that one of the things that we need to do as Christians is that we need to cling, we need to remain, we need to abide. We need to have that personal relationship with Christ. And so that's the first one. I think the second thing that I would propose to you is that we need to cling to a church. We need to cling, and the church is not a building. The church is, is a community of, uh, of believers that come together. Maybe it's the worship service that continues to, to, uh, to bring you together. Maybe it's the rituals, communion, baptism. Maybe it's the hymns. Maybe it's the fellowship. Whatever it is, we need to continue to hold on to those, those ideals. We need to hold them much tighter. And so that's the second one, the church. And the last thing is we need to hang on to each other. Because with each other, there, there, there is power. Together we can make a difference in the life of people in the community as well as within the church. Together we can do a lot of different things. And so those three principles are hang on to Jesus, cling to the church, and lean on each other. 
And as you do that, you're continuing to be connected to that vine so that you can produce that fruit that God has given to all of us. And so what, we, what can we do? Well, there are times that God will say, let go. Listen to his voice and trust him as, as you obey his nudgings. Let go of the things of the world, but hold on tightly to the things of God. You're not asleep yet, are you? Okay, just wanted to check. All these things are vital. And I always look for uh, a, a three prongs um, uh, tool or, 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 uh, or table. And I, and I say all three of them are important. Because if you sit on, 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 on all three of them, then they will hold you up. But if one is missing, then the little table or the chair begins to topple. And, and, and so it's important that all three are vital. My, my kids got me a, a cordless screwdriver some time ago. How many of you have one of those? And aren't they fantastic? Just think, if I push you a button, you get the job done a lot faster. And you don't have all that problem with your, with your, uh, with your hand or your wrist and all that. But I've also learned that if you don't attach it to a power source, what happens to that screwdriver? It becomes useless. It's just like Dave was talking about the, the, uh, um, the, the grapevine and how great it is. You know, I've noticed that there's no clock in here, so I can keep going, right? Without a continual contact, what I'm trying to say this morning is that with a, without a continual contact to the power source, our lives just become like that cordless screwdriver that just sits and looks pretty, but it's useless. But when we are attached to, to that power source, then our lives become alive. And we are able to withstand the storms of life. One of the things that I meant to do is I meant to ask, uh, I wasn't sure if you had a, a screen up there, but I see that you do, but I, I meant to ask you to put the, the word rope on the screen, the word R-O-P-E. For rope reminds me that that I recognized, the R is for I recognized that I'm a, I'm a sinner who is in need of a Savior. There's only one person who is not a sinner, and that is Jesus Christ. The O stands for obstacles, and they're all around us, aren't they? They're continuously screaming at us. But see, when, when you're attached to Jesus, you can overcome you can overcome all those obstacles. This, the P stands for perseverance. It's like competing in a race. I can compete, not by myself, but I can compete with all others who are surrounding me, who are cheering me on. And the E stands for evangelism. I think Dave said it very well when he said about, about the good news of salvation that we need to share not only with our children, we need to share with each other, but most of all, we need to share it with God. Because the next person that you see might be the one that accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so, in closing, I'm, I'm reminded that I've been in ministry for about 30 years now. And I remember that I, I heard not a vocal voice, but I heard God telling me to let go. Let go of my, my job and my home and, and to follow him. And through those 30 years, there have been many struggles, but I've also been richly blessed. My message to you this morning is to look around. 
look around this congregation and to see if there is another who is slowly, slowly losing his grip or her grip on that rope and to hold on to Christ, to cling to your church and lean on others so that God can use you as that cordless screwdriver that is empowered, that is alive, and that can share the good news with another. No, we don't have to beat anybody over the head, but by the words and by our actions, we spread those fruit that Dave was talking about. I know who holds my rope, and that is Jesus, my church, and my family and friends. I hope you know who holds your rope as well. God bless you, and thank you. Amen.